So the latest one has to do with this notion of leptin resistance, which is a if you guys, if you're listening to this and you don't know what leptin resistance is, great. Don't worry about it. Just tune out, black out for like the next, you know, two and a half minutes. But le- leptin is this hormone. It, it's best characterized as like maybe a, a short acting uh, sort of uh, uh, appetite regulator in most folks. It is uh, in the body floating around proportional to the amount of body fat that you have. So the less body fat you have, you have low levels of leptin. The more body fat someone has, the higher levels of leptin um, people have. And it's been thought that if, you know, a person were to gain a significant amount of body fat, well, their leptin levels would go up and that this particular hormone, which again, usually in the short term acts as sort of like a a satiety hormone or like stop eating. That's the, that was this thought, right? And so, oh, if you have all this extra body fat, your leptin levels are high. It should go to your brain and and stop you from eating more. That theory has been around for 25 years. There's effectively no evidence in humans supporting that line of thinking. Even when you give people a lot of like extra leptin, exogenous leptin through the medication metroleptin and and other sort of agents that have been trying to manipulate this leptin axis, if you will, or leptin hormone, it doesn't work. People still eat. It doesn't doesn't tamp down your appetite. In fact, what we've learned is that individuals with very low body fat, whether it's starvation, anorexia nervosa, stuff like that, they have very, very low levels of leptin, and that is a very strong appetite stimulant. Very, very strong. Um, And so, yeah, that's how it works. It just doesn't seem to do much when it's high. Uh, And even these new like GLP-1 receptor agonists, so Ozempic, Wigovi, uh, Terzepatide, et cetera, um, they actually lower leptin levels. Hmm. I actually didn't know that. Yeah. The recent meta-analysis came out uh, a few months ago, 20-something studies, lowers leptin levels. It's more of like a, you know, hey, you didn't know this. Well, there, there, there you go. It doesn't, that's not the way it works to tamp down appetite because you would think if anything, oh, you lowered leptin. Oh my gosh, people's appetite should be much higher on these right. medications. turns out it's just, that's not really how leptin works. And so providing a little bit of feedback about this, this idea, leptin resistance is the cause of obesity and it's not willpower. I'm like, well, we, we agree that willpower isn't like the main thing that's changed over the last 50 years with the tripling of the obesity rates. But it's not due to leptin resistance because that is really no evidence in humans to show that it happens. And, uh, oh, no, yeah, it does. Look at what GLP-1 receptor agonists do. I'm like, well, yeah, they actually lower uh, leptin levels, which is kind of the opposite of your theory here. And so – and then I was called a wellness influencer, uh, <laughs> which I guess I've been called worse. Sure. I mean, how do you feel about that characterization? <laughs> I, like, I don't – I guess, you know, it's like – the people say it in a, a, a disparaging way where it's like, well, right. look, you're I think med- that's the issue. Yeah. Yeah. You're medically trained, but now look at you, you're a wellness influencer. And I'm like, am I wrong though? Are physicians wellness influencers? If you take the terms literally, <laughs> you would hope you would hope I it's just weird. I'm like, I'm like, if, if somebody says something that is far outside of their area of expertise and it happens to be incorrect and potentially harmful, like I, you, I do think it needs to be corrected. I just wish that I had a better story about leptin rather than like, oh, look, here's the data. So you just, you know, here you go. Yeah, it strikes me as being very analogous to the carbohydrate insulin kind of theory. It's like people have this idea of here's what insulin does. It, you know, causes storage of things. Therefore, when it goes up, things are stored. That includes body fat. So don't eat carbs. Insulin goes down. Fat goes away. And it's like that's a ne- nice, neat, tidy story. Similarly, leptin uh, you know, proportional to, to body fat. And so when it's very high, et cetera, et cetera. And so here's the implications of my model. And it's like, okay, that's like a theoretically kind of tight explanation. Now let's test it. And when both of those things have repeatedly failed to be predictive of outcomes in humans, both the carbohydrate insulin model, uh, has, you know, not been well supported and neither has this, uh, leptin, uh, resistance model or, or kind of theor- theoretical explanation. So you just, trash them and move on <laughs> like, yeah instead like, of instead of getting wedded to it uh and like basing your identity and your business model and your practice patterns all around theories that uh you know don't work that's that's the other thing it's like this particular person is not in the health or fitness scene they're just like leptin resistance why don't people more people know about this and i'm like well if anything leptin resistance has been like promulgated by wellness people <laughs> like in the low carb world like that's sure. like the whole thing uh, so like, and people who like should know about leptin resistance do generally know about it. And they're like, yeah, this isn't really the thing. Similarly yeah. to like, 
oh, you just got to keep insulin levels low. It's like, yeah, well, GLP-1 receptor agonists actually increase insulin and cause massive weight loss. Mm -hmm.